Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to continue working on uh, the things that we were working on last week. That was the doors and uh, light switches uh, and even some of the pot lights that we're going to put in the ceiling here. But first, we're going to, uh, because we were working on the doors last time, uh, we're going to add a little bit more detail to the main exterior doors. Uh, and by that I mean putting in a little, maybe a little weather stripping uh, section along the edges here just to sort of create a bit of a space between because as it stands right now, if we were to just go and uh, turn off edges, uh, the, the door pretty much just blends into the, to the molding uh, or to the door frame around the edges. So we're just going to go into this model. And so we can just hit hide on the first floor there and then go into the door model and pretty much just push this over uh, once we get into the actual component. Push this over about an eighth of an inch, not too far, just enough. And uh, push this piece over as well. So what we'll do is just drag in some guides, probably a quarter of an inch. Then we can just drag some boxes around these. Bring it all the way down to the ground here. And then we can pull these boxes out the eighth inch that we dragged it in. I'll actually go back in and draw these lines here so that we can uh, texture those differently later on. All right, so that is that door done. And we can just uh, go back up, get out of the component there and uh, say unhide last and then we can see how the door blends into the frame and it's only a small change but i think it'll make a sort of a significant difference once we get into texturing and lighting and all that so now what we'll do is go around and do that to the back door on the side here on the garage uh, and then i guess we'll look at uh, maybe these doors maybe it's not necessary with this one because we already do have sort of a weather stripping piece going around. So I guess we'll probably we'll, we'll probably leave the uh, sliding doors alone for now, but we will go ahead and do the same thing on this door. All right, so that's that one done. Now we can go back and unhide it again. And now, of course, something that wasn't done with these exterior doors was the hinges. And I guess that was sort of a detail thing at the time, uh, or maybe a slight oversight. I honestly can't remember, but it's, it is something we can go back and do now. And uh, because we do have the hinges made on the other doors, we can pretty much just borrow those components. So here we have the copied hinge. We can pretty much just group this now. Uh, and if you're not sure how to make this hinge or you didn't watch the previous part, you can go back and uh, see how that was done. But for now, we'll just call this uh, door hinge full and then figure out a way to rotate this 90 degrees. We can put it there and then uh, start figuring out where to put this. Obviously we want to have the hinge on the inside. So if I go out a 32nd, just find a place to put this. Uh, and then I guess we can try to replicate uh, similar placements of the hinges on the other doors previously. Uh, so we'll, we'll bring it down 10 inches and then bring it up 10 inches then try to find a middle point. And we'll do that based on the sort of the weather stripping piece here, just because the metal strip at the bottom is going to sort of offset the center. There we go. So now we'll just copy this down and make sure it's on the blue axis. And then we'll try to center up the third hinge here. Now, if we just went to unhide last, we can try and see what this looks like. And sort of the problem is the hinge uh, joint, I guess, itself is sort of going through the wall a little bit. So what we might do in this case is actually take the hinges and the door uh, and we'll make sure that the handle and everything is connected and we'll actually move this back to here, uh, which is, we'll say, three inches. So now the door is lined up with the frame there. We can erase those guides. Now the only other problem that we have there is that the sort of the door stop on the inside is kind of going through the door. And so we'll just measure what the distance of this was again. Uh, it's a one and three eighths. So now what we can do is just try and pull this out beyond the face of the door. Got it there. Okay. So we can pull it to there and then pull it out one uh, and three eighths. And I guess in reality, what we want is the door to open inward. So rather than having this uh, sort of this runner on the bottom here, take this piece now and run this out to the edges. So now we'll have a one inch space uh, on the bottom here of this 
part of the door sill. I want to probably push this in a little bit. We'll say an eighth of an inch there, just to give uh, a little bit of a separation between the sides and the front. Uh, and maybe actually, instead of pushing that in, we'll pull it out a half of an inch. We can pull this to here, and then we'll just go uh, on high last. And then essentially what we need to do is go into the door and then push the bottom up. Uh, we'll need to turn on hidden geometry there and push the bottom up to the, basically the top of the, uh, of the door stop. So now we can go in and just remeasure what this was. It should be one and seven sixteenths. Uh, and so we can just grab these pieces here and pull them up to where it lines up with that. And then we can do the same on this side. All right, and so uh, I guess that's the hinges resolved for that door. And then we can uh, go ahead and do the hinges on this door as well. Now, sort of the only problem with the way this is constructed is kind of the door box is reversed a little bit. And it kind of makes sense the way that it's set up, but perhaps the door should open inward. And so what we'll have to do is sort of reverse this inner door frame uh, and pull it to the outside. So we'll hide the door itself and measure this three inches. And then we can just take the front here and pull it out, not all the way, but fairly far just so we can unhide our door and go back out and then push the door three inches back, then grab the door frame and push that to the door. And then we can measure our three inches here and just push that right to the line. And there we go. Now what we can probably do just to add a little bit more space to the edges here, because it is kind of tight, uh, is we'll just grab this uh, and pull it over an inch and do the same for the inside so that it lines up. And now currently the metal strip is kind of going through the edges here. So we'll pull that back an eighth. And we'll also want to put, I guess, a metal strip on this side of the door as well. So now we'll go out and hide the first floor again. And because this is sort of boxed off, I think we can just probably uh, highlight these shapes. We can copy them and paste them. And then we'll just reverse scale, minus one there. And now we can just drag them to the door. We'll grab this bottom corner with our move tool and drag it right to the edge there. And then we can fill in the bottom. And then what we'll want to do is grab the bottom and pull this up an eighth like that. And then box off the bottom here. Pull this down an eighth of an inch and that'll sort of give us a strip along the bottom. And so now we can go over and grab the hinges from our front door. Uh, and we won't, we won't need to move these around or anything, so we'll try and keep them on the same axis. Uh, and so we'll just keep this on the green and red as we drag it over. And now obviously we want to put them on this side of the door. And we'll want to have the joint facing in. Then we can just grab our rotate tool, rotate them 90 degrees, and uh, find where they meet up with the door. And then pull them in very close to all the way. Leave them out a tiny bit, that's enough. I'll go and unhide last. Uh, and now last time we also sort of uh, separated the hinges into the door component itself. We haven't done that here yet, but if we do end up getting into a scenario where we'd like to have the door open uh, or move pieces around, we can go back and easily separate that out. Uh, but for now we're just going to leave those separated. And so now we can move on to the garage door. And uh, we're not going to use an interior door uh, just to keep some heat in the house, maybe if the house is in a colder climate. So we'll use an exterior door, and we kind of already have that design figured out. So we'll just copy this door and its hinges and uh, drag it over to the space and just figure out what needs to be adjusted. So here we have the door in place. Uh, and we might want to drag it up a little bit, actually, just to give it sort of a, a bulkhead or, or a threshold, rather, on the base there. And so we'll try and pull this through to the front, just so that the hinge joints can get a little bit more uh, clearance. And I guess we'll drag it over to this side, and then make sure it's not too far up. Drag it right to the corner there. All right, so that's the door frame adjusted. Now we can go in and deal with the threshold. Uh, and so we can just see the space that we have here underneath. Just look at the weather stripping section. It's about a quarter of an inch. 
Uh, and so we can drag a guide up there and then maybe drag a line across the base uh, and then pull this across as well. And then pull this out maybe to where the face is. Uh, another eighth inch past that, maybe just to get a quarter of an inch. And then drag this flush with the walls. So we have the door width and that is two foot nine, five eighths. So we just drag this out that same distance, two foot nine, we'll say two foot 10. And so that brings it to right there. Uh, so that's if the door were to open inward, that's essentially where it would reach. The other issue is if we want the door to open inward, because you know this is kind of a tight space in here, uh, if it were to open inward, is there enough space? If you were to park a car in here, would the door essentially be intruding? Or if you had sort of something in the way, maybe even if the car was parked half in and half out of the garage, so we'll just measure two foot 10 on this side. And of course that cuts into essentially where the garage door is. Uh, but the garage door width is about 10 feet. So yeah, uh, average car width is apparently 72 inches or thereabout. So I think in this instance, we will have the door actually open inward and that'll, that'll make a bit more sense and uh, clear up some of the congestion sort of that this uh, flow sort of has to it. So we'll just go and uh, reverse these hinges around it. Essentially do what we did previously and just reverse the door box. And so we'll just take the hinges and grab this middle piece, say minus one. And then we can drag these over. And we can take the door itself and we'll pull it out just three inches uh, is fine. Or maybe we'll say one inch more. And then we can go into the door frame here and pull this flush to the door so that the hinges aren't uh, going through it. And we can pretty much leave everything the way it is over on this side, but we will have to go back, pull out the bottom here a little bit. So I should just square these off uh, this way so that we can uh, say, pull it out an inch like that and erase these little lines. So now we can go and make the door unique because I don't think we're gonna use this door handle. So we'll just go and delete that and make sure that it's not conflicting with the other exterior door. So now we'll just grab an interior door handle off this one. So we'll now go into this and paste this and line this up three inches in. We'll drag our guide there three feet off the floor. Just drag this down to about there. Erase our guides and then we can just copy this over to the other side of the door. We can just shift it minus one over to here and then drag it flush to the door. All right, so that's that door done. And now we can, maybe we'll put some baseboard in the garage as well, just to finish it up a little bit more than it is. And so in that case, I guess what we'll have to do is add a frame to the inside of the garage. And we'll just keep this very similar to the door frame and make it three inches all the way around and then pull it out 0.75. And so now we can start doing our baseboards. And I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining how to do that because we did cover it in the last part. So if you are curious, you can go back and uh, watch that one. And that is the baseboard complete and essentially wraps up all of the things we were working on last time. So we'll go ahead and move on now to doing some light switches. So we'll start outside all the other components and we'll draw a, a square or a rectangle uh, effectively, we want it to be 1.25 by basically 2.5. And, and this will be essentially the switch part itself. Uh, and then around that, we want to have 2 and 3 quarters by 4.5 box. And this will be the plate. So now we can drag in some guides here and center this. Take this piece and just pull the middle over to there. And so there we have sort of the basic structure of what we're looking for. Now there's all kinds of different lights and light switches, uh, but we will go with sort of a more modern, larger switch style. Uh, and we'll make the plate and the button sort of separate pieces. So we'll double click this and then group it, say light switch plate. And then we can group this one and we'll say light switch button. So we'll go in and pull out our plate a quarter of an inch. And then just as sort of an extra little detail, we'll pull this up. Yeah, 5 sixteenths is good. Pull it down 5 sixteenths. And we'll draw in a box around the edge here. Uh, and if you're drawing a line and you want to inference it while keeping it on an axis, you can just hold shift and that'll lock it in place. We can do that. 
And then we'll push this in, not too far, 16th is fine. And we can grab these top lines and pull them out, flush. That'll essentially be the plate. So now we can grab our button and uh, we'll pull it right into the middle here so that we know sort of what to compare it to. Uh, and we're not going to do anything too elaborate with the button itself. I think we're just going to keep it kind of like an angled switch. And so rather than actually drawing, sort of scaling and, and configuring it, we'll actually just grab the middle here with our rotate tool and we'll rotate it eh, three or four degrees thereabout. And then we can just push this in so that we can see where the switch would line up with everything else. And we'll try and get the face here to line up with that. I think what we'll do is actually rotate this a little bit more. Rotate it one more degree. So we'll just say hide on the button. And then we can grab this and push it up a 32nd. Maybe even less than that. We'll say a 64th because we don't want it to go up too far. Say unhide last. We'll see where our button is. And I think that looks pretty good. I think what we'll want to do though is flush up the bottoms. And so we'll have to go in here and drag this in a little bit. And that doesn't even register on our scale. So we'll just type in 164th and see where that puts it. I think that's pretty close. Uh, so we'll do the same with the top. So then we can go back into the button and we'll push the sides in as 64th. Not very far, but just enough. And then we can drag a guide into the middle here. Drag it up about, eh, about here. And then we'll draw a rectangle, and this sort of can represent a little LED uh, on the actual switch. And so we have this box here about 3 eighths, 3 eighths across, and we can push this piece in. 64th, there we go. Not too big, just, uh, just, just enough. And so there we have our light switch. And now I think what we'll do, uh, just because there is a little bit of a space going around the edges here, and we don't really want the wall color to come through, so we will hide the button again. Uh, and just go into the frame and fill in the back of the frame so that we can reverse it and pull it out a very, very, very small amount, say uh, 64th of an inch. Just add a little bit of depth there to prevent it from clipping with the wall. And then we can unhide last. And then we can group all of it. We'll say light switch full. And so now we can essentially use this to create different types of switches. Uh, or even group switches, which I think we will do here on this wall because we'll have an exterior light, um, sort of a stairwell light, and the kitchen light, and we'll have that all be on the one panel. So we can move this one out of the way, and then we can just go in, hit Make Unique on this, and then uh, pull this over. And so we'll have three switches on this one, and we'll want to keep sort of the spacing the same, so we'll just drag it over 64th, uh, and then drag this one flush to there. So then we can just make the plate unique and pull this over to there for now, pull this to there, and then an extra 64th. And now the side here is three quarters, type that in, and then we can push the side back to there. And now we can just sort of mix up the switches a little bit. So it's a four degrees is what the button is. So now if we just drag this and drag it over eight degrees, that should effectively reverse the uh, angle that we have. And we can just pull it in on the green line there and then try and line it up pretty close to the top angle, which is effectively where it should line up. And so there we have the button effectively reversed, uh, one in the on position, another in the off position. And I think what we'll do here in this case is we'll delete that one and we can just copy this button over. That way we can have the sort of the stairwell lights and the kitchen lights in the on position and the sort of the outside lights in the off position. And so now we can find a position for that. We'll probably, we'll probably have it around uh, the four foot mark and we'll do four feet from the baseboard. Sort of the center and then center it on this wall. And then we'll take this switch and uh, find another place to put that. In this case, I guess we'll have the uh, the garage door light be on the interior here. So we can just grab this piece and rotate it. And I think we'll want to have a light switch for the other door, just in case you come in from that direction. And so we'll drag another, uh, another guide up. There we go. 
And now we can, I think we'll grab another one of these group plates and bring it over to here because we have the bathroom, we have the storage room, and then we're also going to want sort of the living room lights. So we'll drag this to here and uh, put it on this wall. Okay, I'll drag our guide up. So put that there. And maybe we'll move some of these buttons around. So we'll just go in and make this unique. So this will be the bathroom light, this will be the main room light, and this can be the storage room light. So we'll want to have the main room light on, but the bathroom light and the storage closet lights can be off. And so that will do it for the light switches on the first floor. Now we can move on to doing the actual lights. And uh, we'll just focus on doing some pot lights in this part. And we can move on to, you know, chandeliers and other light fixtures in a different part. But for now, what we'll do is just go in and draw some simple circles, change these to 40 faces. And we'll want eh, about a two and a half, maybe three inch light. We also want these to be sort of angleable. Um, so we'll, maybe we'll stick with two and a half. So that'd be 1.25. Uh, and then what we can do there, this will be the physical uh, light or the visible part of the light. Uh, we can drag some offsets. We'll bring this out eh, maybe three quarters of an inch. And then we'll want a space. So just a small space, about an eighth of an inch, probably fine. And then we'll have the rest of the frame and bring that out, I guess, probably an inch. And so we can triple click all of this, group it, and we'll say uh, pot light. So we'll go ahead and pull this down a quarter of an inch. And we'll pull this uh, spacer piece down a little bit. This is representing sort of negative space, but we don't want it to be clipping with the ceiling. And we can pull this down flush with this, and this will be the light but it's sort of mounted behind this plate, so you can't really see the edges of it. So we can leave it like that. And this essentially fairly quickly is, is the pot light. And we can go in and add a little bit more detail to this later uh, as we see fit, but for now, this will sort of do it. So we can drag a couple guides in to see where we kind of want those lights to be. And maybe a bit further, we'll kinda want, we kind of want some lights above the kitchen area, but we also kind of want them to be essentially in the middle here. The range hood itself has some lights and we may end up putting a couple of lights uh, underneath these cabinets as well. But for now, we kind of just want them to be in the center of this walkway. I'm gonna turn off our second floor and just get an idea of where this will be. If we go into uh, our views tool up here, what we can do is we can just basically press the overhead. Uh, and if you don't see these buttons, you can go into view toolbars and then down to your views panel, and that will toggle those on and off. So you can just press the overhead, and then we'll go into camera and parallel projection. And this essentially just gets rid of any of the perspective that the image has, so you can see exactly where something lines up with something else. So we can press the overhead, and uh, we'll just line this up a bit better with the center here, maybe a little bit more towards. Um, maybe what we'll do is we'll have sort of a line of lights here, and then we can do another line of lights above the island because when you're doing dishes, you don't want it to be in your own shadow. Uh, and that will be the case if there's a light behind you. So we can just drag these over here. And now what we want to do is draw in some sort of uh, incremental lines along this guide. But of course, you can't pull in a guide on that angle. So we'll just grab our line tool, drag a line over, and then we can drag in some guides. Uh, and make sure that they stick to the green axis and we'll just center it up sort of between the oven and the, um, the sink. We'll put one there, and then we can drag out another guy to keep it on the green. And then we'll, we'll just do three of these along the space. And maybe what we'll do in the case of the island is actually put uh, sort of a light fixture above it rather than these pot lights. So what we can do is pull in our lines. We don't need to keep them exactly on the three foot six spacer. Uh, so we can have those there, and then we can drag this line in a little bit. And then we can deal with the center uh, light fixtures maybe in the next part. And now we can just focus on centering these. So I'll just grab these three lights and pull them over to here. And we'll just do the overhead camera again and see where those line up. And maybe I'll pull them down a little bit further towards the base here. Now just to line them up a bit be better with the counter. We can delete those guides now and turn off parallel projection. And we can just go back into the first floor, turn the second floor on. We can see where our lights are and make sure that they're actually touching the ceilings. And so fairly quickly, that is all the pot lights wrapped up. 
and next time we can probably focus on doing, uh, like I said, the fixture that goes here and maybe moving some of the light fixtures around, maybe even getting rid of these just so we can have some of them be dimmed and some of them not be dimmed. Uh, when we get to the rendering process, of course, we can figure out how the lighting will all work, but uh, then we can move on to doing some of the other facets, perhaps the living space, putting some of the furniture in finally and figuring out what we're going to do over here. Uh, but for now, that will wrap up this part. And as usual, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.